Uh, good evening and welcome. Uh, our chairman is not present, so as secretary of the board under Robert Jules of Order, Chapter 47, I'm going to call this meeting to order. And the first order of business will be the election of a chairman pro tem. I would entertain a nomination for the chairman of the board. I nominate Julian Portilla. <laughs> Any other nominations? I don't have any. All in favor of Julian, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Chairman. You will now run the meeting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fabulous. Well, thanks everybody. Um, let's see here, let's get to business. Um, uh, so you, you call it to order, so now we gotta do the Pledge of Allegiance, right? Is that next? Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Uh, Tori, would you be interested in leading us in a little bit of a mindfulness exercise? I'd love to do that. So we're going to get in a nice, comfortable seat. We're going to honor our students and our community by gathering our thoughts and attention to putting it right where we are, which is here to govern our school according to our in statement and what's best for our kids and community. So you can just take a nice deep breath and just settle in on the out breath. Breathing in, breathing out, and just find a regular breathing pattern. as we sit and integrate where we've come from and what's ahead of us. Finding space between the two by following your breath. And anytime you catch your thoughts wandering away, you can just bring it right back to your breathing. Next exhale, you can bring yourself back into the room. All right, thanks. So our, uh, our students do a lot of that, and it's really nice that we've adopted that. Little space. Because oh, they need it, we certainly do. Mm -hmm. um, I know I need it when I'm with my kids, so it <laughs> certainly works out. Thank you. Uh, okay, so before we get the folks on learning, uh, did we need to change up the agenda just a little bit? Any any uh, suggestions to change the agenda, Sean? I would ask that the board consider two adjustments. The first is to remove the superintendent monitoring report from the consent agenda, okay. um, as I have an added piece, uh, uh, a letter of support from the finance manager that was not included um, in the agenda. Okay. So moved. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd accept the motion. Yeah. Yep. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And uh, okay. No more discussion on that. Any other the, items? The second adjustment is that we have a recent nomination uh, of a teacher um, on a one year contract um, that needs to be acted on by the board tonight. Okay. So would that come at the end of uh, the session or do you want to do that at the beginning? I think that you could do both of those at the end if you like. Okay, let's do those at the end then. I'll take a motion to uh, put that on our agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Great, then uh, we're doing that. And so uh, nobody taking notes tonight or is that gonna be you, Sean? It looks like it's gonna be me. Okay, all right. Uh, fabulous. And we have a couple adjustments there. Let's move into the focus on learning. Tonight we're looking at uh, city and school collaboration, which uh, comes hot off the heels of our meeting with the city last month, which was, was great. It's a big, you know, sort of hug fest. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a new phase, I think, of our relationship here between the school and the city. It's really going well. And uh, excited to get into some details. So, Ray, Barb, you guys want to take the stage and... Where's the stage? <laughs> yeah, right. You want to sit? You want oh, to perfect. <laughs> you, we have this chair? Yeah, sit up yeah, on that. Sit up at that table here. Yeah. I think that's probably going to be the easiest. Uh, and, and we're all 
the good folks at home can see you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We're doing low tech here. Awesome. Yeah, throwback. So I can, I can start um, just with a little history. Um, back in the fall of 2002, we were getting. Barb, do you mind introducing yourself? Just oh, sure. The folks at I'm home Barbara home. Russ. I'm the 21C after school program director for the district. Um, back in the fall of 2012, we were getting ready to write the next five-year 21C after-school grant, and um, I had invited Ray to join our advisory board, and as a result, he had a brilliant idea of let's partner, and, and more formally, we had been doing some informal things between the city and the school district around after-school planning and summer planning, but this was a way to really formalize it and kind of move us to that next level, which I'm convinced, and Ray and I have talked about it, really um, allowed us to get that grant. And we were the highest scoring grant application. And I think it was that, that strength between the city and the school district and the fact that it was really clear we were working together and we planned together and we'd written the grant together. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Yeah, That's that was huge. that was huge. So we're in year two of the current five year um, grant. Um, and one of the things that I shared with you tonight is um, as of this first fall session, we have 140 um, students that are enrolled in the 21C piece of the after school program. <laughs> And one of the things we wanted to share is over the years how the transitioning between the 21C after school programs and the Thrive after school program has continued to grow. So prior to 2012, we would have at the most one to three kids during a whole mm -hmm. session that would go from our 21C program to a, the city program. And that started back in the days when it was at the O'Brien mm -hmm. Community Center. And you know, kids had to be vanned back and forth, which was, you know, you can only imagine what, what parents thought of that. So anyway, so then in the fall of 2012, when when um, Thrive moved to the school district, we you can see the difference over the past um, two years and, and one session, that there's been continued growth in terms of, so it's great, and it's great for kids, because that's been our big, um, our big focus it's always about what's best for kids which keeps it really simple and um, one of the things that's especially nice for my end is we really try for every kid who brings in a, an enrollment form we promise them at least one program so when you're trying to match siblings on the same days and things like that having thrive here just makes it so much easier because then that takes it out of the equation and so we can really put kids in the programs they've asked for and we don't have to worry and parents don't have to worry because it's all about keeping kids safe inspiring learning and helping support working families so so that's my little chart and we're really pleased it's and it's just it's a great it's a it's a great partnership. Mm -hmm. so, well, just to be clear, the twenty one Cs are like the snack attacks and the yeah card games yeah they're the game the, the they're the there. programs that happen yeah. Tuesday okay. Wednesdays and Thursdays from three to four yeah, yeah. right and then and then thrive the, the transition happens for right. the whenever, yeah four o'clock yep so five thirty really when you guys close but yep. uh, yeah that's it yeah great okay. yeah and I, th I think you know to to add to that I think it's been really nice in that um, with Kirsty on board as our new director here and she's sitting over here and I should introduce myself I'm Ray Coffey the community services director for the city of Winooski um, but with our effort of moving more from a child care model to an enrichment model I think for many years Thrive was really purely child care um, it was parents working parents needing a place to stash their kid from 3 to 5 30 and I think over the last few years you know Tori being in that role for a while now Kirsty in that role we felt like we could do better than that. Um, we have these kids for two and a half hours in our care. Let's make it worthwhile time that they're really learning, um, growing, developing. So it's been really great to be able to access some of the enrichment activities that 21C offers. We couldn't do, you know, rockets, violins, snack attack. I mean, we just don't have the staff capacity or the closet space, frankly, at the school here to, to be stashing all that gear. So I think it's been really nice that kids who are with us um, needing that childcare component are also getting that really nice enriching experience. So it's been another benefit too that I think has really enhanced our program. Um, and to sort of add to the increasing numbers here, I shared a little document with you all to 
sort of highlight some of our programs um, that have been run very much in partnership with the school. Some of them are funded through 21C, um, which is the grant that we got together, um, but some of them are not. They're more just purely partnership opportunities that, that um, either Barb and I or others have sort of leapt on and, and been pretty psyched about. So with Thrive, you can see both for the summer and the after school program, those numbers have increased dramatically over the last three years. Um, and we're at a point where we're, we're dealing with wait lists, which as a program um, supervisor stinks. Um, mm -hmm. We hate having kids that we can't serve, um, but it, it really speaks to the fact that there's a real interest and, and the community's buying in and really feeling positive about what we're offering. So I think that's a great sign. Um, and I know Barb's numbers increasing has been a reflection of that too. There's mm -hmm. just, there's really good stuff happening and, and parents and families are reacting to that. So it's, it's nice to see. Um, you know, certainly the after school program is the one that we have the most kind of uh, impact on the school here. Um, this space is actually home base for our, um, our Thrive program and Laura and the library staff here have been extremely gracious and um, the school has been extremely gracious in allowing us to be here. And you'll see here, we've seen numbers grow from 18 in 2012 to 44 with 11 on a wait list for this year. Mm -hmm. um, clearly the move to the school has been a huge boon for the program and, mm -hmm. um, and more importantly for the community is getting kids services after school, which is great. So say nothing of the fact that we're not trying to trek, you know, kindergartners from here to the community center in January. Yeah. Um, that's not fun. So uh, the summer program is also housed here. Um, again, you'll see those numbers increasing over the last few years. Um, the primary reason that number hasn't jumped a ton is that we've been pretty thoughtful about not overstretching our bounds in terms of staff. Um, we've been we work within a state licensed program um, structure, so we have certain staff to student ratios we need to meet. So we're somewhat limited in our capacity there, but um, I think we saw again this year, there were a lot of kids on a wait list that probably would have accessed services had we had the capacity to, to offer that. So, um, so that's a good, again, a good and a bad problem to have. Mm -hmm. um, I may pause on the Thrive front and ask, because that's where the 21C piece really interfaces and ask if there's specific questions that folks have before touching on some of these other partnerships. I don't know if there's anything um, that's just so it's a five year grant. Yes. For the partnership. And then yeah. and, and does then. that change the support after <coughs> five years or is it just really sort of building capacity to get the programming going? It's and you have been yeah. more through this than I have. My my understanding is that in theory, that funding will be available again to be reapplied for five yeah, years from yeah, now, yeah. but those grants are just built on five-year cycles. So right. I fully expect that if the funding is there and we're both here, we'll, right. we'll be applying awesome. again yeah. at that point. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but I also think, and I was mentioning this to Emmanuel, who came from the program to visit earlier today uh, from the 21C program, I think mm -hmm. we're not, building programs on the backs of grants is not great sustainability um, so I think as much as we can we're trying to use these to launch things and keep looking for ways to embed them um, institutionalize programming um, build capacity that's not grant dependent so Good. it's a balance yeah. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. awesome. and I'm also working on a pre-k 16 legislative committee mm -hmm. um, looking mm -hmm. at other funding sources as opposed to um, just having to go out and you know look for change under the couch cushions kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so I've I've tried to get myself involved in those kinds of conversations so that we all know what's happening and we can, we have a voice in terms of what's right. going on there. One other thing I wanted to add in terms of our partnership too is, for the last two summers we've organized it oh, so yes. that Thrive the Thrive Summer Program and the Brain Camp or Summer School uh, at JFK isn't competing. So the day, so the weeks that we would have summer school or brain camp, um, Thrive would only offer half day programs. Or so it's a, it's much better, and and so we were able to capture more kids to participate in brain camp and summer school at JFK because it wasn't these choices. Kids could just make the transition at at noon time after lunch. Mm -hmm. It's really impressive to see the numbers grow through yeah. intentional collaboration mm -hmm. yeah. and, and what can be offered and the yep. engagement that can be had through yeah. the, you know, it's really amazing. Yeah. So one's mine. Mm -hmm. I just, I think that, um, you know, that the whole grant thing and for quite a few years we've tried to, to look at starting to get away from, like you say, the grant and the looking mm -hmm. for the change in the couch cushions. Um, 
and I think in future budget seasons, it's something that that definitely should be discussed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as far as us and and the city council as far as what we're going to do and having, you know, longer term having a plan of saying, you know, what are we going to do here and how are we going to facilitate this? Because I guess I feel that having kids on a waiting list is is not good. Yeah. You know, and we need to address that as a yeah. board. I mean, that's. Yeah. That's where I'm at with that. Yeah, Build I agree. Capacity. I mean, you know, these programs are so important in any district, but yeah. even more so in Winooski, where we have so many working parents. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to have that sort of educational model that you guys are sharing instead of a daycare mm -hmm. model, I think is super important. And yeah, so to have people on the waiting list is a, a real bummer. I mean, you can't, even, you know, it's such a <coughs> scramble as a parent to figure out what to do with the kids yeah. while you're still working. So. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to in any way understate that challenge. Um, yeah. But you know, I think Kirsty and I have had some pretty intentional conversation too about we also want to make sure that for the kids we do have in our care it's a good positive mm -hmm. safe experience and I think balancing that not come one come all and, right. and then oh crap we have way too many kids and not out of staff and you know just trying to balance that I think is a really key component as well um, mm -hmm. trying to do well with what you've got so but I I'm, I'm appreciate hearing that and you know, certainly at the city level, I think the last few years um, we've seen some real strong support from the community in terms of our department being able to grow. But we still we still raise half of our budget as a department. Um, total department budget is about nine fifty, nine hundred fifty thousand. We raise more than half of that on our own through either program fees, grants, or donations. Um, so we're still doing a lot of work to mm -hmm. hustle and, and fund ourselves. So. Um, it's not to say council's not moving and community's not supporting us, but there's still some room to go there. Well, and there's so much time, I mean, to write all those grants and mm -hmm. to do all the follow-up mm -hmm. and get your paperwork yeah. in order and all that stuff. That's just a lot yeah. of work. Yeah, it certainly is. So. But now, uh, just say two words about the, the stuff that you guys are doing in Thrive uh, shares a certain amount of curricular focus with what's going on in the with the social thinking program in the school. Is that right? It, it does, yeah. And I think there's definitely room for growth there. Um, but certainly over the last two years, we've been really trying hard to incorporate the social thinking components that kids are seeing in the school into the way that our staff is interacting with and supporting kids. So that they're hearing the same words, seeing the same strategies, you know, getting the same things. Um, when they land here and thrive that they have been all day. Yeah. Um, and that's gone well. I think we've been fortunate in that most of our staff th in Thrive are actually school staff. Right. So they're just carrying that's through right awesome. from, from school day to after school. Yeah. Um, they speak for the a language. Long, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Makes for a long day for them, but it's yeah. um, we're really blessed with some fantastic folks um, and folks who've been with us for a long time, actually, so yeah, yeah. well before I was here, um, which is great. It's really nice consistency. So, yeah, I think that's good to bring up, though, as another sort of again, partnership piece that there's not a dollar attached to necessarily, but mm -hmm. it's a nice way that we're working together to support kids. So. so I may move to the next couple things here, and I don't, I'm, I'm not going to read these to you because I think you can all, mm -hmm. can all do that. Um, mm -hmm. The community-based tutoring program, um, I just actually did a, a final grant report on. Um, last year, 21C paid a portion of the funds that we um, put out towards a part-time tutoring coordinator. The other half of that was funded actually through the Partnership for Change. Um, we did a grant through them. Um, so between the two grant programs, that's how we funded that position. Um, it's a 15 to 18 hour a week position and runs four nights of tutoring down at the O'Brien Center from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, totally free, drop-in tutoring, um, volunteer driven. So you'll see here we had 81 different volunteers in the program last year, um, all of whom are trained before landing. So it's not just you know, come on in and try to help the kid with math if you can. We, we're mm -hmm. working a lot with folks at the school, um, in particular Libby Houghton um, and Leon uh, and Bill Clark, but trying to get the tutors and the school on the same page so that we're doing the same things, you know, not unlike the social thinking component. Mm -hmm. We want to be consistent so that mm -hmm. kids are getting the same thing here that they're getting in our program. Um, I don't think I included this number and should have, but we had um, last year during the school year um, for 13-14, uh, we had 1,810 youth visits to that program. This is a completely voluntary homework program in the evening, and 1,800 times kids walk through that door, <laughs> which is incredible to me. Um, yeah. And when Go you kids, yeah, and that was you know 96 <laughs> different learning. kids, um, and when you factor that across the size of the school district, yeah, you know I was thinking about that the other day and having worked in Essex before, which is a much bigger place, 
you know, that program would be serving hundreds of kids a night yeah. if you went percentage wise. So it's it's pretty remarkable to see. And this is middle and high? Ownership. Middle yeah. and high school, yep. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually have seen some kids who are Winooski grads who are now at CCV um, coming back for support, which oh, we're not turning those students away. Great. Um, but it's been sort of an interesting piece that they're continuing to see that yeah. place as a resource, which is cool. What's the awesome. total enrollment in middle and high? Uh, middle is, a, or high is about 230, and middle is about 150. Yeah. 380. That's like almost a third right. of uh, Winooski Middle and High School students right. dropping in. Right. Wow. So, and again, they're not being forced to be there. They're <laughs> choosing to come. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe their parents are sending them. But, um, but yeah, it's been really good. And so we have a new tutoring coordinator on this year. Uh, Nick McKelvey is his name. He just started with us this fall. Um, already off to a great start. And uh, I, I don't see that program slowing down at the moment. One interesting piece there is that <clears throat> over 99% of the students we saw were ELL students. Huh. Um, so definitely a lot of um, support around uh, language right. and sort of understanding of assignments and um, in particular literacy-based stuff. So that's something we're working on and trying to figure out both how to support that population better in that program, but also for the kids that aren't coming down, why is that? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna be a big nut for us to crack this year. Yeah. But. Ninety-nine percent huh. were yellow. Yep, and we and we track <laughs> things as students come in. We have forms that they fill out. And yeah, track. So, well, that I mean, that's pretty close to you know, it's a really high percentage of our yellow in middle and high. It is. The high school is about forty-eight percent right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the middle school is lower than that, but it's in the high thirties. So that's yeah. more than half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Yep. Great. That's that's incredible. So. Again, some more numbers there for you guys to, to consume on that program. Our teen employment program, and, and Sean was kind enough to remind us to bring this up, which is great. Um, our, we work on a grant from the Department of Labor over the course of the summer to offer employment opportunities for local youth. Mm -hmm. um, this year we were able to double the size of our program from 12 last summer to 23 this year. Um, you'll see there the various positions that kids had an opportunity to participate in. And it's 15 hours of paid week, uh, paid work during the week, and then two paid hours of training. So all 23 of those kids were getting together for two hours every week to do resume writing, interview skills, um, how to present at work, how to deal with conflict, sort of basic employability and job skills training stuff, which was, um, I think, really beneficial. And mm -hmm. we partnered with Vermont Works for Women to deliver that training, and mm -hmm. they did a great job. Um, also noted here, we had over 50 kids apply. Wow. Um, and Kudos to my staff. They interviewed every single one of those kids um, just for the pure purpose of giving them that experience of having a job interview. So <laughs> it was hours and hours and hours of staff time that went into that last year, and they there was not a complaint from the crew. So I, I got to give them that kudos. And then just the last piece here to highlight. So the city has recently been adding um, community service or commissions to support the various divisions of our work at the city level. So. Um, community services is my division. Um, public safety is police, fire, and code enforcement. And then public works is um, streets, snow plowing, um, parks and grounds, all that sort of infrastructure stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we've committed as a city to try to fill at least one of the seven seats on those commissions with a youth. Um, mm -hmm. Our commission, actually, the secretary is Hannah Little, who's a student here at the high school um, and has been doing a tremendous job for us so far. But definitely still... A few youth that we need to get pulled in, but we are, you know, at the city level trying to really engage youth and youth voice, and want to make sure that that's part of the process. Um, it's a big percentage of our community, and I think by not having them around the table, we're we're missing the boat. Yeah. So, um, so it's been a nice change, I think, at the city level. That's good. Cool. Yeah. What do you think, Ladonia? Sounds pretty good. <laughs> Actually, I know Hannah Little, so nice. it's pretty cool to know that she's. Yeah. Things, so. Yep. And that group is, you know, they're really going to be the ones giving us our marching orders as a as a department, and it's it's nice to know there's a youth voice there. I think yeah. that's really key. So. And that's such a great tie into proficiency based and the shift of school of having student centered learning and student voice. It's so nice that the city and the school are both promoting. We want to hear from you. Yeah. Yep. You'd be a part of it. Yep. And we mean it. Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. It's so right. sincere and genuine. Yes. You. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's great. 
Barb, do you want to just say two words about uh, today's event, as long as we're talking about oh, after-school sure. stuff and collaboration between oh, you guys? Sure. We, um, today we had a big after-school so celebration. It was um, Lights On After School, and it was 4-H National Youth Science Day. So we held a big party. And we had, um, for Rocketry, we partner with 4-H, um, UVM 4-H, and they invited Miss Vermont, who is a neuroscience major at the university. So mm. she came to measure the rockets as they <laughs> were. The, we, we launched Stomp Rockets, and the weather held, which was just a great great timing yeah. on our part. We also had um, we also had our uh, Making Music with Violins program, our partnership with the Vermont Youth Orchestra Association. So. They were participating. We had Thrive. Christy had her Thrive program running, so folks could see that. Um, we had Zentangle, which is an art form. So we had the music going, and the, and the kids were drawing and having a great time. The card game, the card games were wild and and crazy as they usually are. And Uno is still the number one choice from what I heard. Yeah, yeah. And um, we partner with UVM Extension, and Louise Brunel um, teaches for us a snack attack program. So we just we had just maps and little descriptions of the programs. Invited folks to come around. We had. Um, Clempis Annette, we had Robert Millar, Diana Gonzalez, um, Emmanuel Betts, who's the 21C state coordinator, mm -hmm. came. Sean was there, Mary O'Rourke. Um, we ended up with um, ABC, um, Fox Television, and across the fence was videoing, uh, videotaping because we're in hopes that they'll decide to run the story and we can take the kids to WCAX wow. so they can have a tour, which would be fun. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I'm trying to think. Um, Ray was there. Deke was um, there. Deke was there from uh -huh. the city. Um, it was. It started out as like a really small thing, and it kind of people started inviting themselves. So yeah. it was like, uh oh, we better do this big. So yeah. we served cookies and water, and everybody was happy. So. It was, it was just a great acknowledgement for the kids to see all these adults. We had a lot of parents come. We invited okay. all the parents with the kids in the programs today and had a lot of parents come. So that was really, really fun. So it was great. So thanks. Well, any questions for our after school crew? I say our with a you know, capital yeah. O. <laughs> yeah. We're news key. I just I think we're incredibly lucky lucky to have Barb and Ray. Yeah, I mean, they're mm -hmm. oh, thanks. incredibly talented and committed to our kids and to the city, and um, have so much. Uh, there's so much capacity that they <laughs> realize it's it's amazing sometimes, yeah. and uh, um, it's just incredible. So thank you for your your You're work. Welcome. You're here. What's best for kids? That's yep. right. Great. That's yep. right. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. And thank you yeah. for doing all the work you do. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Boy, am I glad we do those. Yeah. Yeah. That's fabulous. All right. So uh, we got to look at the consent agenda and approve the consent agenda from last time with the modification that you mentioned. Is that right? Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, anybody need to say anything about the consent agenda before we move to approve? I move we approve the consent agenda. I second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Um, then I think that one is set. Okay. So, um, moving into uh, what? Number four? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, board management delegation. Right. Uh, monitoring superintendent performance. Uh, the survey. You tell us a little bit about that one. Yes. So, um, Mike and Tori and I worked on this, and this these questions are from the prior year, and uh, uh, I was asked to put them into a um, an electronic survey, and we've uh, flown a couple of drafts back and forth between the three of us, and the only changes that I would add to what you have in front of you is that um, we were going to reverse the order of the excellent, good, fair, poor. So we start with the positive mm -hmm. at uh, uh, Mike's recommendation. Mm -hmm. And then we were also, um, yeah. actually that was it, the, the, on, on the form that you have, those tiny little rectangles should actually be big 
um, for comments. narrative comment boxes, mm -hmm. and they will show up. They show up that way. It was just a printing formatting thing. Mm -hmm. Right. It looks like you don't want people to comment that much if you got that tiny little rectangle. Right. 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 <laughs> don't tell me anything good or bad. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, the initial here. So mm -hmm. I guess what we're what we're really looking for is feedback on on the questions mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, the opening paragraph. Yeah. Um, which really states why this is being done, who will mm -hmm. see it, the fact that it's anonymous, will not be attached to an email, um, and explains one of the limitations of the, of the Google um, uh, form is that you can't put the multiple choice and narrative together, so you have to separate them into question. That's why you have the, the A and the B. Mm -hmm. okay. So mm -hmm. that's explained at the top as, as best as possible I think mm -hmm. but any recommendations on the opening paragraph would be helpful um, yeah. well the, uh, one recommendation I would have is to say what the purpose of it is because um, you sort of say what it is but you don't say why it is uh, you know so it's being administered as part of our obligation because we lined, outlined it in a policy um, and even though the title says superintendent performance mm -hmm. it doesn't actually say what the you know what the object is here like is there going to be a mm -hmm. Is this to sort of guide your our decisions or our planning in the next year, or uh... isn't it just? I feel like it states it in the policy, which is just monitoring stu superintendent performance. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's necessarily needs to be re-explained of what we think the title's enough. I I do one because we do so many surveys in this world now, yeah. and the other is I think that it just keeps it simple. Uh -huh. You know, like we are monitoring the last year and a half, you know, of right. perceptions, and, and this is a piece of a bigger whole, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is their voice. All right. Any other comments? No? Any ideas? No, I think that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jay, any uh, comments? No, I'm fine. No? LaDania? No? Okay. Uh, and just a quick question. So most um, surveys like this have sort of a Likert uh, five-point scale. You know, uh, strongly agree, agree, I'm not sure I agree or disagree, disagree, strongly disagree. Yeah. This was brought, again, I think it was uh, one, one of the things that Mike commented was he wanted to have the same scale as was um, the, prior. the prior year mm -hmm. for some comparison. Yeah. 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 Okay. And we took, um, it was from a, I think it was from a BSBA, Superintendent evaluation of keeping to a four point scale. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, any comments on questions? One, one of the questions was um, in that second kind of circle there, we had talked about this being done sometime end of January, beginning of February. Right. right. Um, yeah. Not and then the, the other one was should this come to the staff from the board or should it come to the staff from me? Probably from us, right? That's my initial thought because yeah. this is what this information we need to do our job. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and it does feels probably less anonymous if you're distributing it. You know, I mean, it, not, not that we couldn't guarantee the anonymity one way or the other, but still, mm -hmm. I, you know, I would want it from your boss rather mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. my boss. Yep. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You agree, Jen? Sure. Great. Madonna? Okay. So, how would we go about doing that then? You would just need access to the WSD staff group okay. to be able to do that. And uh, Mike would launch an email right. with a link, mm -hmm. yep. and then people would go, great. Right. Okay, and uh, this is like a survey monkey kind of thing? That would be this is a Google to... form, so what you, what you get is um, you get a summary of responses in a spreadsheet, you do? Okay. So you, and which can also be displayed in um, pie so charts would, and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, so you'll it'll it'll give you all the the comments that come in, but it'll also give you the breakout of the four point scale. Okay. And in the past, have you guys discussed that here in the in the board meetings? The results of the survey. My understanding is that we would put it in through the whole progress monitoring as we sort of collect the data of progress monitoring reports as we're looking over that for the superintendent evaluation. This gotcha. is just one piece of one it. one data point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and and I think that it's on our annual agenda as to when we mm -hmm. sort of compile that right. data. So this is yep. just a compilation of, we'll put it in with the other pieces. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, sounds good. This is probably not something we need a motion on. Is that right, Jay? 
That's correct. I believe it's just a discussion item, right? We'll just put on Mike's to-do list for January and February. <laughs> yeah, yep, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. So that will be, there's a question about date of administration. That's January and February. And who administers will be right. El Presidente. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. The Italian forum, the board is directed him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, there's a... What else can we get for him to do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In my line of work, we talk about something called externalization of costs, which is to say any group will externalize the cost of their decision wow. to whoever's not sitting around the table. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to Mr. DeCaro. <laughs> With apologies. Too bad. Uh, okay. So let's move on then to governance processes. Um, and uh, 4.1b, for, which is governing style, encouragement of a diversity of views. Um, yeah, and we have a, a student report to the board. LaDania, yeah. what do you think? Well, Rambo couldn't make it, just sends her apologies. Mm -hmm. busy working, so. First of all, the middle school went on a hike, hiking trip to Mount Mansfield mm -hmm. on October 2nd, so it's pretty. Pretty cool. How was the weather? Uh, pretty 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 yeah. nice actually, but a little cold up there because you know. It's right. So, yeah. and then uh, the student council is coming back, and they had their first meeting in the morning of today. So, um, here's another you know fun fact, something fun that I enjoy. The uh, high school band is uh, trying to that I'm a part of. We're trying to kind of spread the word about ourselves and have more fun and be more interactive. So. We will be playing for a uh, happy birthday for any student or faculty birthday. So I'm going to need uh, I'm gonna need your birthday. <laughs> Just send me an email. I will make sure to get you that. And, and I think there were some members of the band uh, uh, marching at Safe Roots International. Yeah, this morning. That was this morning. fabulous. Yeah, going to mention it. Yep. Um, Jared Fountain, mm -hmm. uh, Corbin, and Perez. Same in Mr. Argraves. They played for the... Uh, Walk to school, which is very that nice. added a whole fabulous element to the whole thing. Yeah, yeah kind of parading. Huh? <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah, the <laughs> was very excited, all for it. So. All right. Cool. Show off a little bit. So. Sure. Um, uh, the Parents for Change, which is another nonprofit com community group similar to the Partnership for Change, is uh, starting to work with Winooski. So uh, uh, Rainbow's a part of it. So if you have any questions. Or kind of interested, ask Rainbow. Is that the meeting that's come parent meetup? No. No, okay. That's something Remember. different. Okay. Mm, yep. Yeah. And um, there's a STEM night in science, technology, mm, that's and right. and that's engineering, <coughs> yep, mathematics on October 22nd, mm -hmm. so 6 to 8. Just to kind of like spread the word on science, so there'll be some cool. Uh, fun activities going on, you know, and uh, in order to spread the word about it during our community meeting, they had a little egg drop. And they asked four teachers, two from, uh, both all from the English department, because, you know, English. That's the E, that's the e <laughs> that's in STEM, awesome. right? Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> yep. yep, so they had them go go up on the, uh, they gave them about 20 minutes to create their little little pouch where they drop the egg, try to keep it safe, guarded, and the Mm, it was the two American studs. It was Mr. Lip, Mr. McQuinn, who won. They won against uh, Miss Lauterbach and Mr. McKelvey. So huh? it was pretty cool. <coughs> and uh, Miss Courtney Paquette is planning a school-wide event to donate food for Make a Difference Day. And then on October 25th, when <coughs> food is donated, there will be a community pumpkin carving session. Mm. So and I just want to add to that, that came out of uh, a Roland Fellowship. You're familiar with the Roland Foundation mm -hmm. that supports um, uh, Vermont teachers. And there's a gentleman, a teacher by the name of John Painter at South Burlington High School. And so he, part of his project is is uh, s engaging students in, in community activities and getting them to really look at what their core values and beliefs are. Mm -hmm. So part of that is going to be um, during TAs having students talk about what are your core values and beliefs mm -hmm. and how are those expressed in the school and in the community and then these activities um, for Make a Difference Day. So it's a it's a really a, a much broader activity beyond just Winooski mm -hmm. that's happening which will be really cool for us to be a part of. So, sorry, the pumpkin carving is when? October 25th. And is that in conjunction with the city? <laughs> uh, 
Was that where you were going? I was going to add, yeah, like, do those pumpkins show up on that awesome pumpkin? Uh, I think it, if it's the same as last year, it is. Yeah. Because that so. was what they did. Yeah. yeah so. Great. Because that yeah. is fabulous. Yeah, another example of city school collaboration. Mm-hmm. Whoop, whoop. Last quick little bit. Sports, you know. Yeah. I always have to mention sports. Absolutely. So there's a... And music. Yeah. Girls uh, varsity game at Crassberry, 4 p.m. Uh, Today? Is that soccer? Uh, soccer, yes. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And um, middle school girls game at Grand Isle today at 4 p.m. So mm-hmm. cross your fingers. How, how, are the, how are those teams doing? Are they doing well? Uh, the middle school boys are doing well. Yes. The middle school girls are, are not. not. Their not. record does not reflect their learning. And then both the varsity teams are doing quite well. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, boys surfing game at Hazen Friday at 4. Uh, that for first the middle school, school boys soccer game. game at Grand Isle today at five. So cross your fingers again. Yeah. And then boys varsity football game on Saturday at Otter Valley seven o'clock. How's the football yeah. folks doing? Pretty good. They're, they're doing all right. They're yeah. around five hundred. Okay. Okay. And so that's it. Well, thanks, Ladanya. Yeah. That's great. All righty. Um, so then we're on to uh, 4.14, uh, the governing style board development. Uh, and this is about prioritizing board development work. Um, yes? <laughs> I, can, I can tee that up and Jake can <laughs> jump into. Yeah. In, your, in your agenda packet, 5B, you had um, three possible uh, areas uh, for board development that Jay and I and uh, Mike also weighed in on um, for the future. And this ties back to last meeting where we were talking about board development and what the bud- the budget is for board development. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the hope is today to agree on some topics and then um, I would support work with Jay and or Mike to procure some people to come in to do that work or we would find um, trainings, workshops that people could go out to around these topics to attend over the course of the, the school year. Mm-hmm. So the first one was uh, open meeting law and Robert's rules of order. Did you want to talk a little bit about that, Jay, just to um, give people a Well, just sense? open meeting law has changed, um, and Robert's rules I think is important. Um, I, I, I threw that in there. It was one of mine. Um, one of the reasons is in March, if the public doesn't know, you will from my November district news, I'm, I'm not running again in March. So I feel the board really could use some development in that area um, as I exit stage left. Um, I think it's an important thing. Um, Can we have you on speakerphone? Yeah, we <laughs> um, and it's tough it's tough for members to make extra meetings when the VSBA um, goes around and does its its thing and they've even started to go to webinars which are sometimes hit or miss mm-hmm. um, it's it's something that can be done fairly quickly and fairly inexpensively for training to the board and to be honest folks in the 10 years I've been on a school board it's one of the things that boards get into hot water in very quickly. Right. Um, you know, with the open meeting law and not so much Robert's rules, although that's part of it, but the, the whole thing of how you run a meeting, what's appropriate, what's not, um, you know, things on board member communication electronically, mm-hmm. all of these things are, are things that are very quick and very easy, but extremely important. Right. Yep. Right. Okay, so that's option one. That's option one. That's a good one. That's number good. number two is uh, use of data, and I think that the thinking behind this one is that um, in the near future we will be starting to collect some metrics and uh, around the ends, and so it's going to be important for the board to understand like how, what do we do with that, mm-hmm. and how do we how do we uh, uh, have a process we to work to through the data we get. Days. I would say no. <laughs> yeah, I think you want to think about, you know, strategically. Do you want to do you want to kind of jigsaw it and have some right. people doing, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. some of these, at, yeah. or are there w- one or two of them that everybody should be doing together? Mm-hmm. I yeah. think there's a lot of different options. And I don't. And I don't. I understand that Mike was saying, well, you know, by June, <clears throat> we need to have some type of something. 
but this isn't something that, that we need to just jam these three or four or five suggestions in and obviously our agendas are, are taken up with a variety of other things but mm -hmm. but as things roll out um, you know over the course of the next one to two years we start looking at or you guys start looking at your ends and saying okay you know how do we have our ends we've agreed on the ends now we're looking at metrics how do we how do we know that our ends are either being met or they're not big, yeah. where do we need you know and that's where the data collection comes in mm -hmm. um, yep. and I, I just I think it's important and I'm not I feel our board is this board especially is so creative um, that when it comes to the to the pie in the sky and the and the you know this is what we want and the you know we're big dreamers um, which is really good. I mean, it's a good place for us to be. But there comes a point when you need to say, okay, how do we know these dreams are being realized and where does the rubber meet the road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's really that's where great. data analysis comes in. You know, or even yeah. starting before even the analysis of the data of what do you want for yeah. data? Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. and you know, then after that, okay, what is what are we going to consider good data? What is bad data? And answering all those questions. Totally. Yeah, well, and I think it's pretty easy to like have different conceptions of what data is relevant, and also uh, to just Correct. you know get bad data. I mean, and, and like misuse it, you know, abuse it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think it's, I, I think they do. I've heard they do. <laughs> uh, and I have to tell you that from the the rest of this meeting now, I'll have like the rainbow connection uh, floating <laughs> around in my mind. Thanks to your description. Of the, and look, there's the, a the, rainbow on the, the floor. Dreamers there's the yeah. dreamers exactly. right here. <laughs> and what was number three again? Number three oh, is policy, policy governance. governance. Policy governance. Yes. Those that needs important. to continue. And there yes. was the two important pieces of, you know, the ongoing and continuing to develop right. existing board members while the board needs to have a process for when people come in new, mm -hmm. how do we mm -hmm. really orient. engage and orient them mm -hmm. to yeah. the policy governance model? What about uh, financial literacy uh, <laughs> in terms of, you know, monitoring the, uh, the reports and stuff? I think that would be a good one mm -hmm. to have on there. Uh, and I can't imagine that we could go very long without having all of this training, at least for some of us. Mm -hmm. uh, I get uh, that. Right? Yeah, I got that mm -hmm. here. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And I guess I thought with data, when I was thinking about that, I was thinking financial literacy would be part of it because financial data is valuable data in the school district. Okay. Well, is it directly related to childhood ends? Yeah, you're talking about educational metrics there. Right. You know, I think two two very different. They're very animals, oh, they're they're like very different, different things. Animals, but yeah. they but they're both data. It is both data, absolutely. You know, and well, and it was interesting when you asked um, a few meetings ago you know about the audits and you know what are we looking for in an audit how do you read an audit mm -hmm. those are important things for board members to know right. mm -hmm. you know along with like i say open meeting law and that whole you know that whole animal mm -hmm. yeah it's it's going to be something guys that you can get into trouble very very quickly yeah so and it's it's a good that is actually a good thing to do in aprilish May-ish time frame because you'll have a new member and okay. it would be a good time to bring somebody in perhaps a, a legal representative <laughs> who could come in and, and and give us a rundown on what exactly is the open meeting law what are the requirements you know what are the do's and don'ts yeah it's an important thing for school boards to learn right well it's probably one of those things that you know most <laughs> meetings uh we won't have to pay too much attention to but if ever anything heats up a little bit we're going to want to be real careful about mm -hmm. it. all right so so anybody disagree that we need all four of those topics or 3.5 uh so so now we're talking in a, in a in the cycle of a year i would imagine is that right that's what we were talking about. I what I hear from the conversation is it's probably more than a year. Yeah. To to do it with depth. So if we do it with depth with the whole board, are we talking like a separate meeting where a few board members do it, or if we take it off just the current <laughs> monthly meetings and make it a separate meeting? You could do either or, depending on what type of of preference you want to do, but. It's, I think, honestly, those four things, I wouldn't rush it. 
whether you're if you're going to use a regular meeting and, and again you guys do what you want because again in march i'm not here but if you're going to use a regular meeting make sure you allow a significant block of time where people can really get the rich fullness of it and walk away with a good understanding of of those subjects if you're going to do a, a secondary meeting um that's fine as well that would be up to the board i can't really see using our extended meetings for a really good, good i was just thinking that the, it seems like this would be something that outside of the the meetings and possibly sharing out yeah um it would seem like it would behoove us to have us kind of do some separate things yeah. and then share out right. and yeah, and just to be a little more efficient with time and efficient with everyone's time and level understanding and being able to go deep versus trying to mm -hmm. yeah. hold on to all of it. It's nice to have areas of expertise I also. Think the policy governance should be done at least annually in the springtime. For everybody. For everybody. Yeah. 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 <coughs> just a, That's a probably refresher a good one. Yeah. Yeah. and yeah. any yeah. new more members that are going to yeah. be coming on. And, and I think quick refreshers of Robert's rules and, and any updated, yeah, you know, like you're really great about saying, okay, the the some of the rules have changed around us being able to email you know as things get updated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah those are easy to touch on in yeah. these meetings I think but I so would true learning I, I would, would for, for things for aspects of the law though I would stress um, for things like reading audits for things like open meeting law I would stress a hundred percent board member participation yeah. mm -hmm. in that yeah. Just because things can get work. missed, questions yeah. can be asked, and, and, you know, things like an audit. You know, we had an auditor come in last year. We have a brand new one this year. Maybe it's a good time to meet that person and have a friendly conversation. Yeah. And, again, when you get a new board member in March, April, May-ish, you know, it's a good time for to perhaps bring in a, a legal expert to, to go over things like Title I and open meeting law. You know, yeah. and that's something that all the board really should be part of. Now the other things, yeah, policy governance training, that's something Mike and Sean maybe can bring back. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I would stress when it comes to things with the law. Pay attention. Well, not pay attention, but be be present because you may hear something that Jen doesn't yeah, or Julian may. Right, exactly. Somebody could say, oh, hey, remember we're not supposed to or we are supposed to or whatever. Right. I would highly stress that. So then I would propose that we find a time when all of us can do the open meeting law one. Uh, now that doesn't actually sound super long. Doesn't VSB do like a little short sometimes. webinar? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. Cause that, I, I would okay. suggest that Things like open meeting law, Roberts rules, those could be things that you could do in a regular meeting. Okay, because you know we would just look at the agenda short. plan and say, okay, block out an hour, right? Ninety, you know, ninety minutes for something yeah. like that, and you have somebody come and do the presentation, the Q and A. Uh, I, I would also suggest that some of the financial reporting could be done that way. That way, mm -hmm. yeah. you just wouldn't do it all in one meeting because people's, yeah. you know, you'll be fried. Right. So you pick a report, you look. Maybe at the expenses one week and you know one month, and then you look at the revenue side, and and then uh, you know we will have the auditor coming in to you know talk about the uh, the closing of the books from last year, and so that would be a time to talk about the audit process. Um, so I think there's some opportunities to kind of put some of that into the standing meetings, but the bigger things like policy governance, mm -hmm. that that's a much that's bigger good. conversation, particularly for a new board member. Yeah, yeah. and for our continued education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And well, data. To check yourself to make sure we're following it properly. Yeah. yeah. And then the data, yeah, that's something that we all should take. The student data. And, yeah. That we should all take your student data? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because, again, then you can piece it out. If everyone knows, but that's a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So no, we don't want to put that on one person. And it's know? not necessarily, I, I guess, my thought on the data, it's not necessarily all the data collection but it's perhaps bringing somebody in who's really good at separating the wheat from the chaff, yeah. if you will, yeah. who, who can teach the board and say, you know, this is what good data looks, looks like, this is what bad data looks like, and this is how you discern the two, so that when Sean starts bringing data, the board is with it enough to say, 
we we want this to to look at to for meeting our ends or we don't or whatever those may be do you have a sense is that like is that like a two-day training a two-hour training a, a 20-minute training i don't know sean what are your thoughts on that you know about data-driven yeah, decision making and that kind of stuff what, i think it's longer than an hour 90 minutes in a Okay. So maybe so, like a morning session on a Saturday. Yeah. Because yeah. I think you're talking about process and, and how do you look at data and what are the Is that guiding questions. Is something we partner with Burlington even maybe and do like a, could be. Ooh. a district yeah, partnership thing. Yep. Or mm -hmm. even other districts. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because I mean, it, that is yeah. where everything's going to be going future wise, anyways. Yeah. And be wise, take your time, and pick someone who's sharp. You know, and you'll learn a lot. Yeah. All right, so um, so policy governance and data sound like they would be out of the regular meetings. Uh, open meeting law, financial literacy sound like it could be something that we would include in our standing meetings. Is that right? Okay. Uh, and it sounds like we all want to do it all. <laughs> all <right>. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Well, I've met my goals for June, and I, <laughs> yeah, <you're good. laughs> I'm not going to be here for it. So good luck to everybody else with what you guys took. LaDonia, as one who's in school every day, do you have any tips for us on all this training stuff? Take notes. Listen. Just, well, I mean, everyone has to learn things, so it's just something. No, no, just keep in mind that everyone needs work, so. Well right. said. Good. Okay. Great. Uh, this is not probably another thing that we need to approve so much as just organize later on. Right? Yep. Okay. Got it. Alrighty. Uh, create written governing policy. So we need to look at our tobacco prohibition and the uh, privacy of health related information, the HIPAA law. And we. this is our first discussion, first reading. You make any suggestions, and then next month we come back and approve. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. All righty. So, and uh, are we doing the thing where we have uh, our policy and the VSBA policy? Yes. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Uh, any ideas about uh, tobacco versus... Uh, so I can make some observations and recommendations if Great. you want yes, to get, a, get the discussion going. Mm -hmm. um, as you'll note from the, the VSBA model was updated in November of, of 2013 and I think that the biggest addition there is the idea of tobacco substitutes mm. with yeah. e-cigarettes yeah. e and vapor yeah. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So the policy, the model policy has not changed hardly at all except for that addition our local policy was practically the same. So in terms of a recommendation, I would say that we would want to um, update our local policy like the model to include the, the tobacco substitutes, tobacco paraphernalia, um, and um, keep our first um, sentence in, uh, in the interest of providing a self. I like I think I like the board that. has agreed to keep a, <clears throat> uh, an initial policy statement that really talks about why we have these policies mm -hmm. and what, what the outcomes are. Mm -hmm. um, and to upgrade that language a little bit around um, uh, our definitions of people who come into the building, which are you know, work, study, volunteers, and all those different mm -hmm. uh, definitions of, of folks. Uh, but the, I, I don't see that it requires much change. You really take the the updated model and uh, you keep our first policy um, sentence at the beginning and uh, uh, I would suggest that that's all that needs to be modified yeah Great. anybody disagree with that seems like a no-brainer this reminds me a little bit of our alcohol uh, policy from last time except that it's clearer <laughs> mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and this is something the legislature acted on this pretty quickly as you'll see in the pol in the model policy the the citations you know around uh, 
Oh, yeah, paraphernalia right. and substitutes. Right. They they were on it pretty quick. Yeah. yeah and right. so this does mean that big events here, you no know, walking outside on the school grounds and smoking, and then nope. coming back in as right. visitors. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's nice that they included the language of nicotine rather than tobacco. Mm -hmm. All righty. So I think that recommendation is sound. Then keep what we got and add the modifications from the new model. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? Okay. And this is just a reading, so we vote on this next time. Correct. Okay. Cool. Right. Next. Okay. Moving on to uh, HIPAA. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. What do you think, Sean? As you'll notice, the model policy, uh, po policy is uh, remarkably short mm -hmm. because it's talking about um, federal law. So uh, basically, you have to be in. Com we need to be in compliance, and our policy really the bulk of what you see is the procedures behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, which that's my job to refine those procedures and. <clears throat> In my first gloss over those, I'll be um, synthesizing those a bit. Hmm. Do other schools' HIPAA policies go into the same level of detail as ours? Do you know? I don't know that. I didn't haven't looked at any others yet. But if you look at the if you look at the policies, the model and our local pot, they're they're the same. Mm -hmm. Aside from all the procedures that we have connected to it. Yeah, that's... Uh, you could use our Roman numeral. Mm. Really extensive. Knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Gets into the C's and M's. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean, the suggestion is that we, we keep the policy, which basically says that we will comply with the requirements mm -hmm. of HIPAA, um, and then we'll have procedures. Great. And you'll synthesize that and tidy it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this isn't really something that we, we didn't, there's really not much to say on the policy. It's require the federal law or don't, and I think we choose it to yeah. apply. Right. Uh, Good decision. <laughs> <laughs> and then procedures. All right. Okay, well, that's our first reading then. Uh, and unless anybody has any suggestions on procedures, which I would uh, not be excited to hear about, we can move on to the next one. Right? Okay. All right. All righty. So there's our readings. Uh, oh, yes, the MOU. The MOU. Right. We need to, the MOU between the city and the school. So last time, uh, last month, we had a, 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 a I think great, you called it a hug fest. A hug fest with the city. <laughs> right. And then we had uh, the sort of, you know, more important on some level details of how that all goes down just now. So we need to approve the city MOU. So, um, any comments or questions about this MOU or Sean, is there anything you want us to look at in particular with regards to the MOU? No. I, I mean, it was in the agenda packet. You guys discussed mm -hmm. it with the city council already. Um, the only thing I need is the, ex ex the action to accept it and then signatures on the original document. With that the city council have already signed. Yeah. Uh, now mm -hmm. they've already signed it, it would be kind of shifty to change it. Over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I would accept then a motion to approve the MOU with the city. So moved. Second. All, right, all those in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay. I think the intentionality and action behind the city and school working together is it's pretty killer. So amazing. Yeah. For the benefit of our kids and families. It's right. just really Amazing. To the and point where it, where it's hard to imagine that it was ever otherwise. Right. You know? Why did why does this happen all the time? Yeah. We're yeah. all kind of doing what you know. Totally. Hugging the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well well said. Well put. All right. So that one uh, that one was easy. Pass this for signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, board membership on the Pass partnership it. for steering uh, committee no. of the partnership for change. Sure. Who is currently on the board of the partnership for change? Mike. Mike. Okay, well. Just keep him there. Just keep him there. Going back to that externalization, <laughs> externalization of cost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell him once Probably again he's been idea. directed. <laughs> we won't need to change that. Yeah, hereby. We've been reconfirmed. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> to the partnership with James. Excellent. Um, and then the report and discussion of VSBA regional meeting. Who, uh, you want to tee that up for us, Sean? Or is that, no, who's... Uh, did we talk about it? Um, we, you, I left early after the secretary spoke. Oh, oh, that was, yeah, it's great. Um, it was, I mean, there's been several uh, VSBA, VSA sponsored regional meetings around the state, and they've been using what's called the situational analysis, uh, which is a video um, put together by Nicole Mace of VSBA mm -hmm. um, that really gives a great. Uh, historical and foundational um, view of educational funding and mm. uh, gives some great statistics and basically brings to the point that something needs to change mm -hmm. and that's that was part of the later discussion at the regional meeting was uh, kind of brainstorming getting together with other board members and other administrators and talking about you know what can we do what are the levers to uh, um, continue to provide the excellent education that we do for students um, at a reasonable cost to the citizens? Any good ideas? Um, I think there's a lot of good ideas. I think it requires time, and you know, there's that gets into there's a resolution going around that says let's cap um, uh, property tax rates at, at uh, FY15 levels for two years hmm. um, that's being floated in some municipalities mm -hmm. um, to give the legislature time to uh, uh, work on some solutions. Hmm. Um, a lot of the talk that I heard was around uh, consolidation and shared services. Mm. Um, you know, we have an interesting uh, event coming up, Chittenden East will be uh, um, voting on merger. Mm. in November um, wow. and it sounds uh, people are feeling that I've talked to are feeling pretty positive that that will um, go through on the vote which I think um, could turn a lot of the conversations in the, in the state mm. and then is a merger between it's it's really a merger of school di of uh, it's a supervisory union now but into a single school district mm. um, so that they could then move towards consolidating services and having single budget, having single board. Oh, this is not a change in the number of buildings, but it's a change in the number of boards? That no, I think right now the way they're talking about it, it's not a change in the number of buildings. It could lead to that at some point. But basically it's just one board instead yeah. of 12 boards or yeah. whatever. Right. Yeah. But also the service piece right. would be mm -hmm. some financial savings There'd too. There would be some opportunities more coordination. there to pool services. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I would just, the, what I took away from it, is I would just recommend, especially for you, Sean, that we keep very careful track of our student data because there was some data that flew up on the screen about Winooski that I had some questions yeah, about. Yeah, we've questioned that data. Okay. Oh, and I'll leave, first of all, I'll leave, it was hard to see because we're yeah, very yeah, small. Very small, <laughs> but I'll, I'll leave that at yeah. that. But we just, as this thing starts to roll out whatever way it goes we need to make sure that our data is very accurate in the school district are you saying they showed data that reflected poorly on Winooski no I won't say that I just I had questions about it it, it showed a, a um, uh, an enrollment or an ADM number that did not appear accurate right. that's correct right, it was going down yeah. smaller much lower than yeah. what we Maybe it's believe we have passing. right well and also the data no, that you just showed <laughs> from current year to last we our numbers right. have gone up in all three buildings yeah then that's a vsba number no that was an ag agency, agency of education, education. oh then that is yeah. pretty serious yeah. then. so rebecca holcomb was there talking and i think that what i took away from it too was really positive about the great work that's going on, but just being yeah. realistic about what we're all kind of up against in terms yeah. of lowering population, property taxes, scores. So it was, a, it was a really, they presented it in a way that provided just factual information and then let's talk about this right. as, as a unit of Vermont too, and really sort of as a collective. Mm -hmm. how, how do we want to proceed? What does our future look like in education and how mm -hmm. we're, you know, our children and our, you know, all of that. It, it was, I appreciated the way that it was presented um, 
as in terms of a collective problem solving. Yeah. In a positive way. Right. No, yeah. that sounds good. And my, my district news article this month, um, along with me saying farewell. Um, you can talk, sing that. Touches, touches a little bit on consolidation right. and just encourages our public that the board is going to need their input and support because the consolidation issue isn't going away, folks, and it's going to be yeah. some, one of the big issues that yeah. this board is going to wrestle. It's not going with. away for us. Did we just had a well, report I think that said citizens uh, in general. I mean, there's you know there's yeah, it's it's everybody. I mean, yeah. We're not alone. Well, well, well but sure. I think I think what Jay's referring to is last year there was a there was draft legislation mm -hmm. that got went pretty far mm -hmm. um, and didn't make it through, but it was about a multi year process for districts with um, you know, less than 1,000 students, which would impact us, that need to explore um, consolidation, shared services, and all those things, mm -hmm. and need to do something. Right. And but we just if, did, you, if you don't do something in a number of years, then there was what was called design teams who would do it for you. Right. So I think, to not to put words in your mouth, but I think what we, we want to be active and we want to be proactive mm -hmm. on this and not end up with, oh gosh, here's legislation and we're mm -hmm. gonna get it done to us. And well, yeah. I think what that should, should motivate us about is the fact that we had our consolidation study report, right. mm -hmm. but we had phases that we do need to continue to pursue. Yep. And right. so to make sure that we're still on board and in line right. with moving, taking the action. Yeah, well, in the, in the limitation of that study also was we only really were talking to Burlington. Right. That's true. Yeah. So. So maybe there's a yeah. capacity there's and we did, to could be other, and we did other say other in later <laughs> phases that we were going to open right, this up and talk to other districts. Exactly. Right. So Cold that might be something we need Burlington. to put on a future agenda. And I will, I will take this opportunity to plug myself. Even if I get off this board, I would love to be on one of those committees, guys, as a community member. Amen. For consultation. You walk away, the doors close, Pat. <laughs> 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 You're dead to us. <laughs> you're just kidding. But, no, except but, we yeah, like, can you phone a friend on the rather roll suite? <laughs> no, I, as, yeah. a, as a final word of what, what we took away from this or what I've been taking away from this, and, and I've been, in the 10 years I've been on this board, I've been involved in no less than three somewhat consolidation studies, whether it's been central office services or whether it's been a study of the whole district or this, that, or the other thing. What you should take away is you need to get out ahead of this thing, mm -hmm. because if you don't, again, Sean said, it, you know, you will lose the control of saying, yeah. you know, plus if you do do something to collaborate and maybe save a little money or do whatever, do things better for kids, yeah. you can defend yourself a little bit. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that, that I've heard a lot since I've been here, um, at the board level and also from students is in the high school is wouldn't it be great if there were more opportunities available mm -hmm. you know so it's about creating options yeah. yeah and understanding why i mean we have options for kids at the high school level right now they can access school choice but they're not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you hear kids saying boy i would really like to take spanish or i'd really like to take ap european history but we don't offer that because of our size right, right. So um, there's just so many different ways to look at this and to, to work with other districts around creating more opportunities for kids. Okay. Jen, did, uh, you... Jen well, did I was you? just going to say we've already discussed like food services collaboration mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so I just recommend we follow through with that and yeah. look more into it. And Absolutely. Because reality is if you can save the district and the taxpayers' money, yep. it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. And benefiting right. our kids. Right. So we've already started it, mm -hmm. now just following through with it. And the purchasing end is a no-brainer, huh? Mm. So, so Donnie, what do you think about getting more opportunities for I'd high school students? I'd love to. That'd be great. Yeah? Like, like with the language thing, there's so all we offer is French in class, which, especially with languages, it's not, not really good because you really need a teacher to be teaching languages. It's just, just one of those things that needs to be taught inside class, so. Right, even as opposed to like, Taking it online. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And the advancements to mm -hmm. the quad. The APs. The APs. Oh, the language mm -hmm. advancements yeah. you mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. And some of our neighboring districts, guys, were fortunate to be in Chittenden County because Chittenden County, truth is, is 
is a powerhouse as far as school districts are concerned. This is where the bulk of the students are. Oh, yeah. And the educational opportunities, I mean, there's German being taught, there's Chinese. Spanish, there's Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really the opportunities Chinese. are there. Yeah. And, and the conversations, and, and if you go to our conference at the end of this month, looking forward to another conference, it's not a bad idea to have conversations with board members in some of our neighboring districts. Yeah. Because well, they're excited, too, to, to do things, you know, for opportunities. Why can't our students sit in, you know, virtually in other people's classrooms? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Why hasn't that been, has it been looked into at all? No. The closest thing I have to it right now is the um, Vermont has created their own online consortium. consortium. But it's not, it's not that style. It's a teacher who teaches kids all over the place. It's not a mm -hmm. classroom that other kids, can participate. Um, you know, call into or. Yeah, those yeah. are both good options. Actually. Yeah. All right. I think the other thing to be uh, to be cautious about online learning too is, you know, there was this big blast about it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's going to save everybody money, but the research that's coming out, even at the college level, is um, uh, the quality. And the depth of learning is not, not what we had hoped it would have been, uh, particularly in those early college years um, and in high school. So while we may kids may have credits up the wazoo and do all these cool things, are they really learning with depth and substance that we want them to? Yeah. Well, uh, speaking as someone who, you know, teaches online for a living, I would say that that's also evolving. You know, and the technologies yeah. are evolving. What we learned about learning online has evolved. And I, I mean, I, I could never see a complete replacement, but I could certainly see a, a blend and, and you know create some opportunities where currently they don't exist. Because I mean, shuttling people back and forth to different schools around Chittenden County is right. uh, that's not a very attractive right. proposal either. Well, in the way yeah. that the schedules are, you yeah. know, it's goofy, but that's yeah. the thing that gets in the way. Yeah. yeah. CVU has a four by four schedule. You know, uh, South Burlington has one, but. You know, blue day doesn't match red day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, right. and then you got the tech centers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that were really kind of held hostage to their schedules. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you, said you have to look at the, the subject lines, too. Like, definitely some online courses are very beneficial, and kids can get a lot out of them. But, like, languages, mathematics, mm -hmm. science, those things shouldn't be done as much online as... Well, it depends <laughs> at the level they're at when they're doing yeah. the online classes. And I think a lot of it depends on the learner. Right. Sure. What right. skills that's do they right. have that's to right. learn? That's so, I mean, that and that's what you just, you have to keep in mind when students put themselves in there. Maybe. But I still think a virtual classroom would be ideal, yeah. especially in the Chittenden area. But yeah. I don't know how. Can you pass All right. the pen in the yellow? Yeah. Please. Uh, okay, so let's move on then to, uh, well, anything else on, on VSBA stuff? That's a, that's a good look into the future. Got to keep uh, our minds on consolidation. Oh, and then uh, correcting this uh, number that the agency has about yes, us, we, that seems we, important. We put a call into them. We haven't heard back yet. Okay, because if they're using it for that, they're probably using it for other things too, and other calculations and machinations and so forth. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say about it, except I hope it's just an oversight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, community engagement. Uh, what's going on? What are we What are we up to? Anybody got anything to report? No, we went to the city. <laughs> we went to the city. We went to the city. That was great. So, uh, Doing a lot of football games. Great. How's the boosters coming? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, we're going to be doing a invite everybody to the safety celebration this weekend. That's coming on Saturday. Well, it's a celebration of safety? It's Yeah, it's our safety professionals. What time is that? It's a good oh, question. Oh. I you mean like, like I firemen say, and police and stuff? I, I don't uh, know, honestly thing. know the it's actual down. time because I know I my, my taskmaster, I mean my wife, <laughs> <laughs> will have me down there setting up at all hours of the morning. So, um, but I, I want to say it's either 10 or 11 o'clock. This weekend? Yeah. I believe okay. so. All right. Tori, you got anything? Uh, we had a PAX meeting last month, which was awesome. We started yeah, you guys have changed up the format quite a bit. A little bit. But what was really fun is we uh, started out with the greeting was to have everyone share where their family came from yeah. to this country. Yeah. So that we could find commonality in the fact that we are all 
immigrants here. No matter exactly. What color your skin. No matter and no matter how long ago. Yeah. You know, and so that was really fascinating to see that the two major groups in the room were Irish and the Nepali Bhutanese. Yeah. So it was great to hear. Even someone even remember they that knew that their family came from the Mayflower. Mm. Wow. So I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> way back I need to look into that. Yeah, it was wonderful. Right. So it was great to hear different stories in different uh, places. Yeah. Yeah, that's Keep really coming cool. Around. Uh, October 15th, mark it on your calendars. Uh, community dinner down at the O'Brien Center. We are doing our third installment of the Opiate Abuse Prevention Dialogue. Uh, all are welcome, LaDanya. Uh, hoping to get a good crew of Peace Jam folks down there. Uh, Sean was there last time. Tori was there the first time. Jen keeps saying she's going to come down. Well. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what? When is it? When Wednesday, is it? Wednesday, Wednesday, October, October 15th. 15th. I'm yeah. booked. Sorry. Okay. So After Libby will be back, and she said she's getting some students to come with her. Awesome. Great. Great, 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 great. What time is it at? Uh, 5.30, I believe the dinner is, and then we'll start talking at 6. Okay. Mm -hmm. I won't be there for the dinner. Okay. But come I can back. walk over and be there by yeah, that's a great one. I mean, you know, JC was there, yeah. the wellness coordinator right. from the school. You were there, I was there. Uh, it was really a great group last time, really. Mm -hmm. Interesting folks. Anything else yeah. on community engagement? LaDanya, any, uh, any community engagement stuff going on in the student body that we need to know about that didn't make it into your report? I don't think so. Okay. It's still kind of early in the year, so. Yeah, yeah. All right, fantastic. Um, next agenda. Well, before that, we have the two oh, adjustments yes. that we need to yes. revisit. So the first one, let's see, I'm not sure if Jen got those handouts. Right. So why don't we um, start with the uh, superintendent monitoring report uh, on policy 2.3, financial conditions and activities. So you mm -hmm. had my report uh, in the mm -hmm. consent agenda. What was missing from it is the document that you have in front of you, which you saw last month, which is a supporting letter from the uh, um, finance manager. Great. I so move. that will be it. Sorry, that will be attached to the report and posted. Uh, oh, that's online. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I move we accept the uh, monitoring report evidence and the monitoring report. Second. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? Opposed? Okay. Uh, okay. And secondly, uh, I'd like to nominate, um, as you see on the paper in front of you, Whitney Doobie to be a uh, middle high school reading literacy teacher for the remainder of this school year. As you'll see, um, she is uh, certified in English grades 7 through 12, uh, level 2. She was an instructional assistant. Uh, with us and has um, worked in the ELL summer programs for two mm -hmm. summers um, and has done some subbing for us and we're very, very excited that she was able to adjust her, her plans and, and remain with us in this full-time position for the remainder of the year. That is great. So she has been in the building for a while? Yes. Great. All right. Any motions on this one? I move we accept the nomination for this position. Uh, any more? Just, no, okay, let's see. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, anybody opposed? Great, abstentions? Great. Thank you. Uh, fantastic. That's great. That was uh, some quick work. That's really great. Um, and then next agenda. What do we need to look at there, Sean? Nothing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you have a great annual agenda plan. Isn't yeah, that yeah, fabulous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, so we have an executive session, is that correct? Well, hang on, we have some things here. We have a flu shot clinic on October 13th, 2.30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's here. Get your flu shots here. No school for students on October 17th. Line up your daycare now. <laughs> uh, Vermont State Board of Education meeting October 21st, 9 a.m. at LMC. Where's that? That's right here. Oh. Whoa. Here. Gotcha. Right. When is that? Tuesday, October 21st. <laughs> So it's the state board's monthly meeting, and right. they asked if they could have it here. Well, hmm. and you said yes. We graciously host them. It'll, we have some airtime to talk about the great things that we are doing here. Awesome. Very good, very good, very good. Very good. And we will feed them and show them our wonderful food service. And, Excellent. Uh, That's great. And does RETN do their meetings also? I'm or not sure. Are they I mean, on? Somebody does. I'm oh, good. Sure okay, so does. we can watch it. Yep. 
We can come by. You can come by. Nine to three. Nine to three. Started working. Oh, high right, school there's students. that job stuff. Okay. Uh, then, um, oh, the STEM night that Ladonia mentioned, October 22nd, 6 p.m. Yeah. VSA, VSBA Fall Conference, Halloween, I know, uh, right? October 30th and 31st. Anybody going? Yeah, I'm going. You're going? So Mike and I are, and Jay are okay. scheduled to go. Fabulous. Uh, and then um, the next meeting, November 12th, be there or be somewhere else. Uh, and then... I think that's it. I would accept a motion to move into executive session. So moved. Do we move. need to do that? I move we enter executive session to discuss a grievance matter. Thank you. Anybody any second that one? Second. Okay. Jay Pardon? Jay did. Okay. Uh, so we need to approve that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any, any everybody in favor? Anybody in favor? Let me see. Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Opposed? The objections are great. Okay. Uh, let's move into executive session then.